Right now, our players for round one are going to be getting seated in the Bochum Regional Championships. We have Matt Maynard versus Toma Gravui. Oh, that is <laughs> going to be a spicy one, I think. Yeah, I mean, Matt Maynard is a player, if you don't know them by name, uh, they go by a different username, but... Um, online but a player from the UK yes. uh, that's had a lot of experience in the video game championship mm -hmm. uh, played in the Lille regional championships uh, most recently I believe and Liverpool uh, in series one as well mm -hmm. uh, so you know been keeping an eye on the format and what they're going to be uh, using I'm really excited to be seeing really really are but of course his opponent which we have had the pleasure to feature as well I believe in Stuttgart if uh, memory right. serves right uh, Thomas Rabouy of France uh, talking about that Lille regional championship he did actually <laughs> I believe win the yes. regional so uh, he is a regional champion he has been uh, doing quite well he's been improving on his game as time goes on of course he is one of those veteran players that he used to play back in the day but then took a bit of a break but then said right oh actually I want to try to get a bit more involved once again and he's been doing exceptionally well so he was one of those trainers of course we did make a mention he reached top eight of last weekend's o uh, Oceania International mm. Championships, which is an incredible feat uh, with a lovely little Sylveon <laughs> and a, a, a mouse hold and annihilate combination. Right, and it's going to be interesting to see if he uses exactly the same team as he used in the Oceania mm. International Championships or you know, maybe through the tournament found a few little tweaks and changes that he wanted to bring into the tournament. I, was, I think it's quite going to be quite good to see him play because you know it's two, two games in a row or two tournaments in a row mm -hmm. where there's quite significant jet lag going on. <laughs> yes. um, and you know it worked the first time, so <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing if it's going to be working the second time. Well, exactly. I think we were talking to Lou about it just before, and <laughs> she was saying, yeah, the jet lag's still a bit there. <laughs> it, it's a bit of a long trip, maybe about a 24-hour total um, you know, round trip, so it is definitely something to take into consideration. But of course, we do have the trainers, which will now be prepared and getting everything set up, of course. So looking into this, uh, Ben, I think this will be a great showcase going into Bochum. Yeah, wait, what a way to start off the tournament. You can see Shedinja on the desk there, <laughs> a Pokemon that Tomahi used to win the Lille Regional Championships. Not available in the Paldea region at the moment, so uh, going to be interesting to see you know, how uh, Tomahi is going to be, um, you know, being able to use different Pokemon and use something that he's not as familiar with, but clearly, you know, he's been doing that all season and is really, really experienced at doing so by now. Exactly that. But I think we've got a bit of access to the team list just now. So just to run a couple of the Pokemon through, Tamar is going to be bringing the Roaring Moon, Arcanine, Mousehold, Iron Bundle, Annihilate, and the Sylveon, looking mm. like it is indeed the team from last weekend. It does look that way. And uh, yeah, we're, we're going to see a little bit of a masterclass as to why uh, Tomar made it to those top tables mm. as well. So again, great way to start this off. Uh, Matt is going to be running a Mousehold, Golden Go, Annihilate, Roaring Moon, Great Tusk, and Talonflame. So there's some Pokemon in common here. Mm. Roaring Moon on both sides, uh, Mousehold on both sides, and we've got the uh, Annihilate on both sides as well. So if those face up against each other, we'll see the benefit of how these Pokemon have been trained. I mean... You could imagine there may be a situation that we have Mouse Odd and I Lape versus Mouse Odd and I Lape. So <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what each of these trainers value. But we do have a couple of the accomplishments. Matt has gotten a uh, Bremen Regionals top 16 uh, for both Liverpool and uh, uh, Bremen, I believe, in 2022, as well as a Players' Cup, the third edition EU top 16 back in 2021 when the uh, circuit, of course, did shift over to online. Right, exactly. So lots of top 16s there for Matt, a player that I know quite well um, from, uh, you know, previous events and, uh, you know, having uh, having a chat to him outside these events. But uh, Toma, a player that almost needs no introduction, as we said before, the Lille regional champion, Oceania top eight in series two, a very relevant result. Um, and we'll see if Matt playing a little bit more of the underdog uh, mm. in this matchup between the two. 
um, and we'll see how his team, you can see on the screen there, um, is going to be faring. Yes, yeah, so a couple of noteworthy things. We do ha see that safety goggles on mouse hold. Um, uh, I believe this is actually Tomas' graphic. So we're going to be, even though we're seeing Matt <laughs> on the side there, we're just going to be talking a bit about Tomas here. So the Sylveon does have Thorax Spray. We do have that Assault Vest on Arcanine, which is quite nice. Focus Sash on Iron Bundle. Um, I think we have seen situations on whether the booster energy item would be preferred on the Iron Bundle or the Roaring Moon. You've got that right. interaction of the Acrobatics and Flying Terror type on Roaring Moon, which is immensely powerful, especially in combination with, let's say, uh, if its attack stat is the uh, highest stat there is, the um, uh, Protosynthesis will be giving that additional damage output booster. But it looks like, you know, the uh, Roaring Moon on Tomar's side of the field is a little bit more supportive. Mm -hmm. um, and I quite like that. Uh, Roaring Moon, uh, certainly at the early stage of the Series 2 format, we, we're all thinking, you know, like, OK, let's get a booster energy going. Let's get acrobatics going. Let's go flying terror type. We'll make it like Tornadus of old back in <laughs> back in 2013, which I used uh, back in the day, ba back way, <laughs> way back, back in, in the, the day, day. <laughs> um, uh, to great effect. And so like. Yeah, it looks like there's another way to play Roaring Moon, and that's what Tomar's going to be going for. We do have now Matt's team on your screen there. So that Annihilate Mousehold combination still bringing up the form, uh, bringing, bringing into the four, should I say. Mm -hmm. uh, but also that Talonflame Great Tusk combination that we saw a lot of in Orlando. Mm, yeah, and I think being able to see that combination makes a lot of sense. You've got that Earthquake for the double target action going, especially with a Pokemon such as... Uh, uh, Great Tusk being so, so powerful. Uh, it is quite interesting to actually see Life Orb on Talonflame. Sometimes I do know that Great Tusk do opt to go for that Life Orb to enhance the additional damage output that it can, of course, uh, dish out. We've got Golden Grove then. Let's please talk about it. I think I saw a weakness policy there. Yeah, weakness policy is a great move to have on a Golden Go um, because it already does great damage, but also uh, yeah, if you boost it up, it does quite a lot more damage. <laughs> yeah. So who uh, needs a nasty plot? We'll, we'll see if that uh, we'll see if that comes into play as we do have Tomar's team on your screen now. As we were talking about the Roaring Moon with that booster energy, uh, but not going for the acrobatics. In fact, both going for the Terra Fairy mm. um, there, but. I do also want to call out this Arcanine here, carrying the Assault Vest, one of the top usage stats that we were talking about previously. Yeah. We can see why Assault Vest plus Intimidate means that it's going to be taking such little damage when it comes onto the field. Exactly, and I think a Pokemon that is noteworthy, when you do have an Arcanine, you don't want to run into as many Defiant users on the opposing side of the field, so that is something that will need to be taken into consideration from Matt in whether he will be bringing that Annihilate, which of course does carry the Defiant ability, because in the end of the day, uh, as an Arcanine, you either want to go ahead, deal a bit of damage, um, go and actually get the Intimidate uh, pivot switching going, but also those Snarls are really, really right. vital in actually slowing down those specially offensive Pokemon. And, and speaking about Snarl, that weakness policy on Matt's Golden Go, it's going to be really impactful because if you Snarl it, usually you Snarl a Golden Go and you're thinking like, yes, Make It Rain's going to be doing a little bit less damage and we're not going to be under so much threat, but that's going to activate a weakness policy. Yep. And so like instead of going to minus one, you're actually ending up at plus one. And so you're boosting it up with that Snarl attack. So Matt may be able to switch that in and take advantage of it. And you can even compound with the Nasty Plot as well because that Golden God does carry it. So <laughs> if you're expecting a bit of a passive play from your opponent, you could go quickly for the Nasty Plot and the Weakness Policy proc. Boosts, boosts, boosts boost for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Multi-boost for everyone. But of course, like, it, the interesting part of that is the Golden Go on Matt's side of the field is Terra Water, mm. which isn't weak to that dark typing. And, and so, like, if you end up in a position where Matt's used the Terra on Golden Go, mm -hmm. the Arcanine is going to be able to snarl it successfully and yep. not proc that weakness policy. So yep. there's a lot of factors to how that interacts with the game and the, the Pokemon that both of these players are choosing. Yeah, it really is fascinating to actually see those intricate sort of interactions going on. And this is definitely something that both of these trainers will have to take into consideration. What are we thinking about leads so far? Do you, do, are we thinking that uh, these players might try to default back to a, a certain flow chart based on the opposing uh, Pokemon on the other side of the field? I think the, the really great thing uh, for Matt in this matchup is that Talonflame has the ability to go for a Tailwind first. There's nothing that uh, Tomar is able to do about that in the early game. Um, and because the Iron Bundle on Tomar's side of the field 
isn't carrying that boost of energy, it's not going to be raising its speed. And Iron Bundle with a speed boost, effective speed boost, yeah. should I say, is something that is faster than a lot of Pokemon like Matt's Great Tusk into Tailwind. So mm -hmm. um, the fact that it doesn't have that boost of energy allows Matt, I think, to go for that Talonflame Great Tusk combination and just like start off strong, set a lot of damage onto mm. the field right from the get-go. Yeah, and um, uh, in this sort of matchup, I think going for as uh, quick uh, of a big damage output sort of resource makes a lot of sense. You want to go in offensively. You want to try to get those knockouts where possible as we're actually going to be seeing the leads. Here Ooh. we go, everybody. Round one, we have Sylveon and that mouse hold over on Tomaz's side was over on Matt's side. We have the Talonflame and the Golden Girl. We could be playing Series 1 now, Costa, <laughs> uh, yeah. seeing all of these Pokemon on the field. No Paradox Pokemon in sight here. And a really nice lead out the gate for uh, Matt with that Talonflame allowing Golden Go to be the fastest Pokemon on the field, followed up by some Make It Rains, will do a lot of damage. And Tomar's going to have to be really careful with his Sylveon. Mm. It is the Terra Water type, so can just change itself up and make sure that it's not taking super effective damage for that make it rain and we'll have to see if that's exactly how these uh, how matt approaches the match whether he just goes straight on the offensive right off the get yeah he may even just go for the nasty plot here i don't see anything stopping him from doing so as we're actually going to be seeing the talon flame switched up for the annihilate maybe wanting to go ahead and actually preserve that gale wings uh proc and ability giving the Talonflame a plus one priority in all of its flying type moves. As, wow, we're actually already seeing a terrestrialization. Sylveon opting to go into its water terror right now as the Mousehold just wants to redirect any sort of attention going into Sylveon's side here. But I'm not sure if that's going to help as we're going to be seeing Golden Go being a bit mischievous over there, <laughs> scheming uh, mm. and up, and t up to a plus two of its special attack as we're going to be seeing, of course, Sylveon off to go for the Terra Blast. It did want to focus down on that Talon Flame. So really good switch out there for Matt. And why it's even better of a switch out there is because we're starting to get the procs of enhanced base power from that Rage Fist on Annihilate. And I bet Matt was really happy not to see a <laughs> Hyper Voice going off there, <laughs> wow, switching yeah. in the Annihilate. Possibly would have been able to survive the attack. Annihilate is known for its high uh, defensive stats, or at least its high health. Yes. Uh, at the very least. So, yeah, nasty plot there, a great uh, great turn there for Matt, just getting those boosts going. Yeah, exactly. As we're going to be seeing the taunt go into the Annihilate, wanting to shut down any sort of bulk up setup here, but wow, in return, we're going to be seeing a one hit KO onto the mouse hold, not so much of damage dealt onto the Sylveon there. Yeah, really actually quite surprising to see that little damage, even though it's a resisted hit coming out onto the Sylveon. But that Rage Fist, boosted by one hit, does significant Ooh. damage. And we can see the Annihilate could happily switch into that Hyper Voice. It really, really could. And of course, we're going to be seeing the Threat Spray now come into action uh, from Sylveon due to, of course, the sound-based move of which Hyper Voice is, is now up to plus one of its special attack and a bit of Annihilate recovery with the leftover. So I think given the fact that we didn't see that that much damage coming up from the Golden Go may suggest that this Golden Go has been trained to be a bit more bulky. Mm. And it kind of makes sense with weakness policy because you want to extend its longevity as much as possible in the field. Right, and now that Sylveon's got a lot to worry about, the Make It Rain is probably not going to pick up the knockout here. Uh, so you'd have to opt for a Shadow Ball or maybe a Rage Fist coming in onto the Sylveon slot if you're Matt to make sure you're picking up the KO. Of course, Matt could try and take advantage of that, maybe expect Toma to play a little bit more defensively, try and preserve that Sylveon for the next turn and play defensively himself. Yes, as we're going to be seeing the Protect right here, makes a lot of sense. Maybe Matt doesn't want to uh, dedicate uh, himself to getting the terrestrialization just yet from his side. That Roaring Moon, however, does get speed control on Toma's side of the field, setting up that Tailwind, as we're going to be seeing the Hyper Voice. Sylveon, now outspeeding the Annihilate, because at least Annihilates tend to be naturally a bit more faster than Sylveon's, will be picking up the KO, and uh, allowing the Teleframe actually to come back in here with Gale Wings still active. Right, and a really good uh, long-term view of the game coming out there from Matt. Tailwind coming up on Tomar's side of the field is able to be matched straight away oh. by the Tailwind on Matt's side of the field. And so, yeah, Matt has the ability to just make sure that Sylveon is knocked out this turn. You can launch out and make it rain if you really want to because Golden Go's 
we're not really worried about what the Sylveon's doing to it, and Talonflame equally so. Like, yeah, okay, it can take a Terror Blast, uh, but once you've got that Tailwind up, it's kind of done its job, and you want something else to be coming into the field to make sure you're putting on that pressure. Yeah, exactly that, as we are going to be seeing the Terrestrialization finally being opted from Matt's side. It is going to be a Water Terror type galore from both sides of the field. There's Golden to go is now, of course, the Water type. And Sylveon wanting to go for Protect here, not wanting to uh, accept any sort of damage coming up from this Golden Go, which mm. is the assumption right now, as, of course, Talonflame does set up that Tailwind because of its plus one in priority. And a breaking swipe, something we don't commonly see from a Roaring Moon. It, it, do, it is going to hit both of Matt's Pokemon and drop any attack stats as well, down to minus one. Right, and, you know, it's Snarl on Matt's Roaring Moon, uh, but no Snarl there on... Roaring Moon on uh, Tomar's side of the field. So, like that, ter uh, uh, not sure if I like the ter terrestrialization on the Golden Go just yet. Mm. I think the steel typing would have been quite nice, but I think Matt was probably fearing the throat chop coming out from the Roaring Moon and just wanting to make sure that Golden Go on his side of the field wasn't taking too much damage. Even if you survive it and get that weakness policy proc up, launch a big attack off. Uh, you've still got to worry about it for the end game because we still don't know what Tomar's last Pokemon is. And it makes sense because you want to try to uh, make, ensure that your sweeper, and in this case Matt's Wincon most likely, is as healthy as possible and obviously able to still be on the field to be able to pick up those very, very crucial KOs. As um, Telephone is actually going to be switching immediately out for the Roaring Moon. We do know that there is that booster energy item. However, we don't know how this uh, Roaring Moon is trained, and it seems like the speed is heightened. So this may be a play in ensuring that it can outspeed in the subsequent turn. Right, and a throat chop and a quick attack coming out from the Sylveon there into the Roaring Moon, doing about 50% of damage. But the Shadow Ball coming out is enough with that plus one special attack boost on the Golden Go to dispatch that Sylveon and send it back to Tomar. So we're going to be seeing the last Pokemon that Tomar has brought to this game. But the thing I'm thinking about right now, Costa, mm. is that Tailwind on Tomar's side of the field is going to be ending fairly soon. It really, really will be. And we did, of course, see that uh, Matt had set his Tailwind up a couple of turns later, which does mean one turn, I believe, uh, which does mean that there will be that additional buffer of a turn where Matt will still have the speed advantage going into uh, Tomar's Pokemon. But we do see the Iron Bundle, known to be a really good resource of speed control. It is. It is going to be kind of threatening to both Roaring Moon and Golden Go. When Golden Go's in its normal form, when it's that Steel and Ghost type, it's kind of, you have to hit the Hydro Pump button mm. onto the... Uh, onto it to be able to do enough damage, but now it's Terra Water, you can just opt for a freeze dry and do significant damage that way. Yeah, and I think Iron Bundle is very threatening right here because it threatens both the Roaring Moon and that Golden Go over on Matt's side. We're going to be seeing Breaking Swipe does come out. It uh, Tomas Roaring Moon does actually outspeed, Ooh. super effective, nearly picks up the KO, does drop this attack. Are we going to be seeing a responding Breaking Swipe on the other hand? Does break that Iron Bundle's uh, Focus Sash and of course does bring the opposing Roaring Moon down to minus one, but oh, we see Freeze Dry trying to target down that Golden Go, but failing. So well played from Matt there, as we do see Tomas Tailwind does expire. It does, and ah, uh, there's there's some real mind games to be played here uh, for Matt because it's quite easy for Tomar in this position just to be able to go for the Protect on the Roaring Moon, uh, for the Protect on the Iron Bundle, and just make sure that the Tailwind from Matt's side of the field has expired. There's no way for Matt to kind of reset that um, going into the future turns. But once you're there, once you've uh, had the Tailwind stop on uh, Matt's side of the field, that Roaring Moon got a speed boost and it does have access to that Tailwind as well. So we'll be able to be going first and launching out some big, big attacks into uh, Tomar's side of the field. So yeah, really difficult position, I think, for both of these trainers. They're going to have to find a great way through here. And it makes a lot of sense for the of double protect over on Tomar's side there, because you're just wanting to uh, further expire, just wait for the Tailwind to run out Ooh. over on Matt's side, but Matt making a really <laughs> cool play there, expecting the double protect does go for the roost, and all of a sudden we see half of its HP already recovered. This may even be a nasty plot coming from the Golden Goat if he's really confident in his play, but no, it is the make it rain. <laughs> make it rain indeed. Yeah, 
quite a safe play there, and I like the way that Matt played that turn. Taking the opportunity to get a little bit of health back on Roaring Moon, great. Uh, making sure you're covering uh, both the Roaring Moon and the Iron Bundle while you're still the fastest Pokemon on the field, definitely safe. You could have gone for the nasty plot there. I think we saw Matt hovering over it. Yeah. Um, but deciding to hit the Make It Rain button, I think, was really wise in this it situation. Was safer, right? Yeah, it's, there's no... There's no real reason to be uh, worrying about that, especially if your Roaring Moon with the booster energy speed boost is going to be going first. You can just get that Tailwind up again and launch a Make It Rain. Iron Bundle's not really known for its special defensive stats. Yeah, exactly. As we're going to be seeing Tomas Roaring Moon move first. Does set up the Tailwind, which does mean Freeze Dry comes out right now. Is it enough to pick up the KO? Oh, it my God. It survives on four hit points. And <laughs> the wingers policy. Does get a wingers <laughs> policy. It's as if it was planned. And now, all of a sudden, we've got this Golden Guard all the way up to plus three of its special attack. We see the Snarl coming out from the Roaring Moon on Matt's side. It will be dropping the uh, Iron Bundle's uh, special attack, crucially, to negative one but it doesn't matter <laughs> because Matt has just made it rain. He has absolutely made it rain. That was an absolutely massive attack. No hope there, I don't think, wow. for Tomas Pokemon to be surviving that plus three, make it rain. And it will be Matt taking the first game of this set. Yeah, and it, what a way to do it. Oh, my Lord. It just goes to show you how crucial it is to train your Pokemon based on what you need to cover right. in a certain matchup on your team. So we did make a note. Uh, initially, we saw Sylveon. Yes, it was a resisted hit from the Make It Rain. I believe a plus two of its special attack earlier on in the game. Um, it didn't take a lot of damage. We know Sylveon is really specially defensively bulky. However... We felt something felt wrong. Something felt wrong. It felt like uh, there was a lot more training in its bulk, and that really, really paid dividends there. It did because you know that uh, Golden Go. If you were looking at it fresh and you were thinking like, okay, I'm playing this matchup online. Like, what do I expect to happen in this turn? When you see that Iron Bundle going for a freeze dry, Iron Bundle's a powerful Pokemon. Yeah, freeze dry's not the most powerful move, but hey, you know it's normally enough in that sort of situation. You'd say like nine times out of ten. Yeah, I'd expect that Golden Go to be knocked out. And it does speak to the way that Matt's trained uh, his Pokemon, especially with the weakness policy. You've got to do things that make sense, mm. right? If you want to have the weakness policy activate, you've got to take super effective hits. What does that mean? Make sure it can survive those hits. Yeah, and I think that's really, really uh, the, cr the crux of trying to theory craft or team craft uh, going into these uh, events and matchups. What are you expecting to be the main threats to this Pokemon? How can you best adapt to it? Uh, and in the way that Matt has done, it's been honestly such a delight to see four hit points. Wow, that may have just been very close. It could have gone either way as well. There could have been a KO there, but Golden Goat being able to pull it through. So going into this game two now, let's talk a bit about the adaptations from Tomaz's side. I, I don't think he did anything necessarily wrong there. Uh, he did win uh, a potential speed tie with his Roaring Moon. He did get mm. that Tailwind set up. Mm. However, in the case, I think the main thing was the fact that Golden Goat survived. So do we think there's any new Pokemon that he may want to try to introduce? Or are we expecting both trainers to go with the same form? I, I would expect a similar four coming out from these these trainers. Uh, certainly, Tomar's going to need to bring the Roaring Moon to match that Tailwind on Matt's side of the field. There's two sources in that Talonflame and Roaring Moon. So I'd be surprised if Tomar wanted to take a speed disadvantage mm. against something as powerful as that Golden Go, especially when it can change up its type to play more defensively, yeah. maybe play into a super effective attack if it needs to. Yeah. We've already seen just how much damage that thing takes so yeah having a disadvantage in speed on that don't think i'd like to see it coming out from oh. toma what i was about to say uh. is what i'd like to see <laughs> is that annihilate oh wow we've got double mouse hold on the field we've got one over on Tomar's side next to that annihilate we know that core it is well and true uh crafted there versus the golden go and mouse hold over on matt's side so we've got our setup mons and we've got our redirection mons right and uh, the thing that I'm liking to see is if uh, 
great task hasn't come to the game from that side. Annihilate on Tomar's side of the field is that Terra Steel. And we're looking at Matt's team and wondering how he deals with a steel type Annihilate. Wow, and a taunt straight off the bat from Tomar's <laughs> Mousehold does shut down any sort of status type moves that this Mousehold over on Matt's side may opt to go for. Whilst we actually see the Mousehold on uh, the Annihilate on Tomar's side does outspeed, and wow, we see the tech. We <laughs> realize <laughs> it is there. Mousehold <laughs> goes for beat up onto Golden Go, does skyrocket it straight up to plus two of its special attack. No, di uh, no direct damage from this Annihilate into that slot. Most interestingly here, it seems like both trainers don't want to try to go for very out there strategies. Oh! Shadow Ball goes straight oh into the Annihilate and it picks oh, up the Oh, there's knockout straight away. Oh, Matt wow. predicting that there's no follow me going out. Wow. I must have been thinking like, oh, Tomar's going to be really worried that <laughs> I've got the Encore a able to be played there. The taunt comes out, the beat up comes out, the weakness <laughs> policy comes out, the shadow ball comes out, and that annihilate is just going back to Tomar. It's like Matt looked at the field, saw Tomar's Pokemon and said, right, I see no redirection. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's, it's not there really. It's not. I'm just going to go straight for that annihilate. And we see the roaring moon now coming onto the field from Tomar's side of the uh, side, of course. We see that uh, it is in a good position to try to get some threatening action going, some damage, maybe a tailwind set up, but already annihilate look to be uh, Thomas's strategy of a main sweeper already taken out uh, taken out right but now the mouse hold on Matt's side of the field can't redirect like if the redirection could happen on Matt's side of the field now it'd be like okay this is really going to be an uphill battle for Tomar mm. as it stands uh, only with beat up as an option to be used that mouse hold's going to be going back to May, uh, to Matt in uh, in exchange for the great tusk putting on some offensive pressure here even more so than we've already seen yeah i mean uh, you want some more offense have some more <laughs> offense we're gonna bring it onto the field now and uh it naturally makes a lot of sense we're gonna be seeing that water terrestrialization coming out from the golden guy here it wants to safeguard itself against any uh dark type moves that may pick up ko's on that roaring moon side of the field and we see taunt going into that mm. slot again of course understanding that mousehold needs to switch out and into probably a talon flame, so a really good read there, stopping uh, Matt from going for a tailwind later in the match. That mouse hold taking a make it rain there wow. and being able to hold on with just a few hit points. I actually think that's a really good thing uh, for Matt uh, as opposed to Tomar here, because Tomar kind of needs to bring in something else to bring in a little bit more offensive pressure because you can't redirect make it rain. No, you really, really can't. And uh, Matt can go for a strategy of even trying to perhaps switch out the golden go. It doesn't make a lot of sense to do so because you've got the plus one right now. You've terrestrialized already. So you just want to go for the damage at this point. You want to try to exhaust the resources available mm. on Tomar's side as we are going to be seeing the great task switching back in now for the mouse hold. No taunt coming out this turn. We're just going to be seeing a follow me from Tomar's side of the field, breaking swipe, not hitting much at all in this situation. Golden Go completely ignores this. Of course, does take a tiny bit of chip damage, but the most important thing here is the make it rain. Picks up the K on the mouse hold, deals really good damage onto that Roaring Moon, and is now back down to neutral in its special attack. Right, and I really like the switch in here, the way that Matt's playing this, because, you know, at the moment, Tomar's kind of on damage control here, right? The mm. breaking swipe against the Great Tusk, really valuable uh, attack drops coming out. It's kind of like your own makeshift intimidate with a little bit of damage on the side. Uh, so, you know, really like that sort of play, but Matt's too far ahead in this situation mm. for it to be really impactful, and Matt doesn't have to overextend with the Great Tusk. Just keep that mouse hold coming back on the field with that friend guard. Exactly, and just having that redirection right now makes a lot of sense. You could even set up a nasty plot if you want, uh, so you could uh, guarantee a KO the following turn. Throat chop, not enough to pick up the KO on this mouse hold. Seems like Matt has opted to go just for the damage, even at the, at the cost of Golden Go going down to negative one of special attack. It makes a lot of sense. You know that you're going to be guaranteeing pick on, picking up the KO the subsequent turn and breaking a focus sash on this um, uh, iron bundle. Right, and... Yeah, that's going to be really impactful because there is that talent flame that we know is in the back. So, you know, at some point, Matt's going to have a, a talent flame on the field, the ability to go for a priority tailwind with that Gale Wings ability, and then probably finish off the game with the Great Tusk. All the Golden Go has to do on uh, Matt's side of the field is to just keep putting 
that little bit of damage, extra damage, extra damage, extra damage. Exactly. As we're going to be seeing Mousehold just uh, be such a great assistance to Golden Guard. Does redirect uh, any sort of damage uh, coming out. However, of course, we see that the Iron Bundle opted to go for the double target. Uh, they're just completely ignoring uh, the follow me. We'll be dropping the speed of both the Golden Guard and Mousehold. Uh, but I think in this uh, situation, it's not going to be able to do much. Doesn't pick up a KO, and <laughs> wow, that just deals <laughs> a lot of damage. Ben. It really does. Uh, you're showing showing the uh, frailty on the special side of Iron Bundle. Really great on the physical side and mm. able to take some big attacks. If it was Earthquake coming out from the Great Tusk, or even a headlong rush, uh, you'd probably see similar amounts of damage from. Uh, at this stage, a stronger move. Yeah, exactly. Breaking Swipe comes out right now. Of course, we do see the Roaring Moon uh, does move first. It does pick up the KO onto the mouse hole. Does allow this Golden Go to be left uh, uh, out dry, should I say, for, from this freeze dry. Does get the KO onto it. So it will be going down. However, like we discussed, and I think you mentioned a couple of times there, we've got Talonflame and Great Tusk in the back. Th this combination is so offensive and so powerful. <laughs> we even see the Talonflame naturally does have the life orb too. So, um, do you want more offense? Okay, all right, you took out <laughs> my <laughs> Let me just bring more offense. I've got it yeah. in the back. Let me just yeah. bring this out. It, it, this is a, a totally a momentum game. I really like what Tomar's trying to do here, you know, uh, getting the Icy Wind off, uh, getting those spread attacks going. He's going to be putting himself into a position where, you know, technically, He's able to put enough damage on the field to win the game, but that priority tailwind, the late game priority tailwind, something that we don't normally see on Talonflame, coming in and Great Tusk following up with an earthquake. While it does look like it's floating, unfortunately, Roaring Moon <laughs> is not. And that earthquake picks up the double KO, and it is going to be round one to Matt Maynard. What a set to kick us off for this weekend, ladies, gents, and lovely peeps. We are here. Matt is got his round one win right now, 2-0. Very, very confident start, very decisive. We can see him, of course, he is uh, honestly really loving this situation right now. It's a lot of momentum that he's able to push on to the uh, following turns going into this tournament. Right, and that's exactly how you want to be starting a tournament at 1-0. and oh. So really well played there, playing the momentum game. I, I think, you know, looking at that game, uh, game two, just... That call with the Shadow Ball, it's a really tough call to make in front of a Mousehold it Annihilate is. because you just see like, okay, well, maybe the Annihilate goes for a Terra Steel and then Make It Rain doesn't do too much. Mm. We've still got the Friend Guard in play from the Mousehold. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you Shadow Ball and there's a Follow Me coming out from the Mousehold. It's like, okay, well, the Shadow Ball did nothing there. <laughs> yeah. um, and, uh, you know, Toma gets an opportunity to use that bulk up to great effect. But nope. Just the beat up, just the shadow ball, and, and a clean knockout that just put him so far ahead in mm. the match. No, it really, really is. And I think just being able to see, those are interesting interaction there that uh, dependent on what Tomaz uh, Pokemon, if, for example, the Iron Bundle, we've seen it multiple times, it does actually carry uh, the booster energy item. If it did in that situation, it would have been able to outspeed the Great Tusk even if uh, the right. Tailwind was set up. So being able to uh, not have that, I think the Focus Sash was on the Iron Bundle, the booster energy was on the Roaring Moon. Right. Um, so you're not able to actually get that interaction going. No, and, you know, if it was any other Pokemon than Talonflame, mm -hmm. it would have been able to set up a Tailwind first yeah, um, yeah. and then be able to maybe follow up with a Hydro Pump from the um, Iron Bundle to knock out the Talonflame. Uh, maybe you even go for uh, some sort of double target thing going on, uh, reduce the damage from that Great Tusk while the Tailwind gets set up mm -hmm. and follow up with an attack from the Iron Bundle. Yep. Uh, but yeah, not how the game not how the game goes and Talonflame is a little bit of an anomaly in this format for that reason. I take offense to that. <laughs> <laughs> I am an avid <laughs> Talonflame user. I love the bird. It is amazing. And uh, it is my number one bird, for sure. It's my <laughs> MV bird. <laughs> Most valuable <laughs> bird indeed. So yeah, I really, I really like the way that Matt played that so aggressively to play mm. uh, a call like that in game two. When you're already one game up, you've got a little bit of freedom to do so, but it still takes guts to be able to it achieve. Does. It really, really does, especially against the caliber of players such as Tomar, uh, being able to take into consideration um, 
you know, uh, I, I think the experience, the understanding of the flowcharts and the matchup, and that may have also been a influencer in Matt going for that play. I think being able to go up against a player which you know is well, no uh, which you know that is well known, has a lot of experience. You can mm. sort of go into that sort of template understanding of mind frame, right? My opponent is expecting me to expect that, so <laughs> I'm going to counter that because they're not going to expect that. And right. It kind of works out. Yeah, and and um, you know sometimes those calls work, sometimes they don't. And of course, that's not Tom R done for no. this tournament, not by a long way. No. Uh, you know, O1. Okay, it's a little bit of a harder route up, but because of the new uh, format and the new structure, mm. as long as you go seven wins and two losses, which Tomar is very, very capable of, yeah. doesn't matter when those wins and losses are, uh, you have an opportunity to get to day two. Exactly. From day two, if you, well, especially if you win all your matches in the second day of Swiss, but even if you don't win, say, one of them, mm -hmm. you still have the opportunity to get to that all important top eight cut. So, yeah. you know, a little bit unfortunate for Tomar, but. He's still going to fight back, I'm absolutely sure. Knowing Tamar as we do, he's a very, very competitive player and he will be fighting his way up to the top tables, no doubt. He really, really will. And I think we've seen it from him multiple times do it in the past. Um, uh, there's no doubt that he can definitely do it once again. But uh, Matt, I think it was very interesting to actually see a couple of the combinations of Pokemon that we've uh, seen excel at previous uh, events. Most notably, we've got the Great Task Talonflame. Um, in that situation, Golden Go. Being able to have weakness policy trained to be so bulky right. makes a lot of sense, especially because uh, you may be able to train it in the way where it can, under Tailwind conditions, outspeed one of the biggest uh, you know, meta threats at this point, which may be the Flood of Main, maybe Iron Bundle, which does not have Booster Energy item. Right. Um, so it kind of makes a lot of sense, and it's interesting to see how it's played out, especially in this round one. Yeah, because, you know, I think I think a lot of players have tried to play around with a more uh, a, a more defensive golden go. We've mm -hmm. seen some mm -hmm. uh, carry something like leftovers yeah. uh, yeah. in previous uh, uh, here, some series one teams. Yes. Um, we've seen it carry the fast and offensive life orb sets. Uh, we mm -hmm. saw that I think in Orlando as well. Oh yeah, uh, nasty plot as well. Yeah, yeah, nasty plot. Quite a common way to use it of course we've seen that choice specs whether that's going to be fast and offensive or whether that's going to be a little bit more slower and mm. bulkier able to take a hit but that combination of bulk and weakness policy means that you don't have to really put too much investment into your offensive because yeah. you've got either the nasty plot mm -hmm. if the weakness policy isn't procking mm -hmm. you've got the weakness policy there yep. able to case. take take a hit and yep. you know really punish your opponent for trying to attack the super effective into it yep. um sometimes you've got both and then <laughs> <laughs> and then things sometimes. really go yeah no it, uh, and it is cool because it allows you more wiggle room to be able to adapt based on the threat that is on the field across from you mm. so uh, being able to punish someone for going for a defensive play is amazing with nasty plot being able to punish someone for going for an offensive play <laughs> is all <laughs> it turns out to be the the play with weakness policy because it makes a lot of sense right exactly but speaking of defensive pokemon we have also those roaring moons yes. not playing as aggressively as maybe one would expect and mm. i really liked seeing on matt's team the application of roost mm. a lot of uh roaring moon carry protect and that's exactly what tomar opted for yeah. on his more defensive um, defensively built Roaring Moon, but I really like that Roost being able to just get a little bit more health back. And you can get into positions, especially with Breaking Swipe as your sort of primary dragon type attack. Yeah. But your opponent can't really break down that Roaring Moon anymore because they've got a lot of attack drops and you've got a lot of health recovery. Yeah, I mean, and it's really cool because this this is the sort of um, these are the sort of topics that we talk about when we're saying it's really interesting to see how meta develops over time. You know, when you give it time, it will nurture into something beautiful based on <laughs> what happens uh, with the events that are ongoing. So being able to apply Roost in this case makes a lot of sense. Uh, we have seen that most commonly with a couple of bird Pokemon. You know, I think Corviknight as well. Mm, uh, shout yep. out to Alberto for bringing and <laughs> doing amazingly last weekend. Um, but yes, yeah, so you don't. You can go for Protect on it, but Roost just makes sure that you add that, extend that longevity and punish mm. any sort of um, slow down turns from your opponents too. Right, and you know, a few other things on these uh, trainers teams that we didn't get to speak about. One in particular on Matt's mm -hmm. teams and something 
that I thought was really impactful in the Orlando Regional Championships was that Talonflame Great Tusk. And mm. in, in a lot of players' teams that we saw on the stream for that event, they had yeah. uh, they had the Talonflame, they had the Fluttermane mm -hmm. um, to do lots and lots of damage. And then the, the Great Tusk with the Life Orb came in yeah. to kind of clean up and do a lot, a lot of damage. The Life Orb gets you so many knockouts that mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to get otherwise. And it's yeah. like... Looking at Matt's team, it's interesting to see the application where it's like kind of switched around a little bit, where yeah. you've got that focus yeah. sash on the Great Tusk yeah. saying, hey, you know what? My Golden Go is going to do all the damage that we need to. Mm -hmm. And so I don't need that boosting item anymore on the Great Tusk. Yeah. I can actually take a focus sash. In short, uh, I'm absolutely guaranteed mm -hmm. to be able to attack twice yes. into my opponent's Pokemon. And that's going to be enough. Yeah. And I think something as well, we touched on a tiny bit, uh, the interaction of having Iron Bundle, or whether it has booster energy item or not, does play into that strategy too. I can completely understand team building wise why that decision was made, or one of the reasons why it may have been made from Matt's side of the field, because you can guarantee that even if you set up Tailwind with Talonflame, you've got great Tusk, but mm. because of how they may be trained and the speeds that these Pokemon naturally have, um, the Iron Bundle will outspeed even in uh, Tailwind conditions right. for that great Tusk. So having Focus Sash on it, means that you won't be going down to a Hydro Pump one hit KO and taken aback from a surprise play from right. your opponent. And that's going to be really impactful later in the tournament because, you know, I would say, in my experience at, at the very least, mm -hmm. more than not, Iron Bundle does have that booster energy. Yeah. Not just because of the speed interactions that we're talking about with, say, Pokemon like Great Tusk or mm -hmm. uh, even Golden Go or other Pokemon that are um, naturally wanting to be pretty speedy in Tailwind. Yeah. Um, but equally, just because you have to do it to the opposing Iron Bundle, yes. right? When, <laughs> when when it's so high in the usage stats mm. and, uh, you know, you see Iron Bundle versus Iron Bundle, uh, sometimes you have to, you know, play that sort of speed tie mechanic. Yes. And when you when you think about it, it's like, I used to I used to train my Pokemon to be a little bit slow. And I, uh, <laughs> then I realized, like, a bit of hang on a second. It's good, but wait. 50% is better than no percent <laughs> <laughs> um, to be able to move first. And, yeah. You know, that's a, a really impactful thing going through. So something that's Tomar's going to have to um, think about how he approaches, mm -hmm. because with the with the booster energy on the Roaring Moon, mm -hmm. um, certainly any Iron Bundle with a booster energy on uh, the opposing side of the field is going to be going first. Yeah. And, uh, of course, just to make a very quick uh, update as well, we are waiting for our winner's interview to be set up. Uh, do apologize for the delay. That will be coming out shortly. But I did want to, as well, uh, cover the topic of... We've got Knoxville coming up, right? Right. So in, in several hours. Do we think there is any world <laughs> where there are going to be trainers that will try to find a way to make it in time to get influencers from what's going on today here? I think there's going to be some players that are going to be waking you up reckon? early. <laughs> yeah, I reckon so. I reckon so. If I was playing in Knoxville, I'd be like trying to tune in. For, s for some players, it's going to be like a little bit late at night. So, you know, yep. yeah, you just uh, put a little bit of coffee on. You just wait, <laughs> make, make sure you just wake up. Uh, just stay, stay awake for just that little bit longer. Yeah. Wake up early the next day. Just double check it and make sure, make any final adjustments to your team. And it's like, go for it. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. It'll be really fascinating to actually see uh, how it does, uh, you know, differentiate the meta going into it. Are we going to be seeing same old common Pokemon. I know that there are a couple of people already that have put on social media, oh, I'm bringing the tech. It's going to be something <laughs> that people haven't seen at all in Series 2. I'm like, oh, okay, good. Let's try to like stream it and show it because and showcase it because I think it, the beautiful thing is being able to still find that situation where you can further develop new strategies that may just haven't been discovered just yet. Right, and, and that's going to be the thing that with Series 2, with all of these tournaments, and especially those going on at the same time, yeah. you get to see that these two players, uh, that all these players from different regions, so many of them, we've got like nearly 600, if not more, mm. um, coming out this time um, for the Bochum Regional Championships. If we get similar numbers to Orlando in Knoxville, that's yeah. 850. Yep. Let's say it's 800 conservatively. Yeah. Then you've got what? I'm going to do some really oh, quick mental here maths here. <laughs> yeah. Ar around 1,400 different players oh. all approaching the game in a slightly different way. Mm. Um, and all of those innovations from the different communities that they're a part of, mm -hmm. the different friendship groups that they have, yep. lead to different teams and different approaches to the game. Yep. And we get to see exactly the result of that. I mean, 
we can use, for example, I think uh, we mentioned uh, Gavin, Alberto, and Raghav. Uh, that sort of situation is definitely something that uh, within certain circles we can be seeing come to fruition. But I do believe that we will be cutting to a very short break before we will be getting the winner's interview going. So do not go anywhere, and we will be back with your round one winner, Matt Maynard.